Introducing YouTube memberships, a fun way to support the channel while getting some exclusive perks. Click the join button to become a member now and get benefits like badges next to your name on videos, behind the scenes photos, advantages during the live trivia game, discounts on merchandise, private one-on-one -on -one video chats, the ability to request future video topics, and exclusive 8-10 to 10 minute videos on the history of the NFL. And now, on with our feature presentation. This man right here is Cincinnati Bengals head coach Sam Weish. And if there's one thing in particular that Weish likes to do, it's to hear himself talk. He might not have been a great coach, and he is seriously in the running for the worst coach not named Bill Callahan to ever make it to the Super Bowl. But man, could he talk and say some stupid things every now and then. I've talked about Weish at his mouth in previous videos of mine, and how he would just pick fights and give opinions, and how meltdowns about things completely out of nowhere. So if you want to check one of those out, you can do so by clicking the card in the upper right corner. But this game against the Houston Oilers in 1986 might be a new low even for him. And that's saying a ton, because he delivered a new soundbite every single week. Imagine losing a game and blaming the fans for being the reason that you lost. Except this game was not at home and you're not blaming the fans for turning against you or for thinking that it was a home game, but in reality, the stadium was surrounded by fans of the opposing team. So you didn't know what to do because you didn't think you'd have to go into a quiet count in your own stadium. This was a road game, so you're blaming the fans for being the reason that you lost. But I don't mean it in the sense that the fans were so loud that it created a lot of false star penalties and created a ton of confusion on the offensive side of the ball a la the giant Seahawks game from 2005, where the 12th man absolutely made a difference. I mean that it was too quiet, and you were blaming the fans for being too quiet, because their quietness was the reason that you lost the game. I wish I was making that up. I wish I was exaggerating, but I am being completely serious. In 1986, Sam Weiss seriously blamed the opposing fans for being quiet which somehow gave the opposing team a home field advantage in a weird way. Because this is the story behind what might just be, considering the circumstances, the stupidest moment of Sam Weish's coaching career. Before I talk about the actual controversy in question, we need some context to understand how the game was going, and what exactly led Weish to make those bizarre comments in the first place. It's November 9th, 1986, it's week 10 of the NFL season, and we've got an absolutely big game on our hands down at the Houston Astrodome in the AFC Central, between the Cincinnati Bengals and the Houston Oilers. Now for the Oilers, this game means nothing but pride. They sit at 1-8 and, and have had an absolutely abysmal campaign, having dropped each of their last eight games, including a game against the Bengals earlier in the season, and their most recent game, a 28-7 drubbing at the hands of the Miami Dolphins. But for the Bengals, especially against one of the worst teams in football, this feels like a must-win. They enter this one with an impressive 6-3 record, having won four of their last five games, including their most recent battle, a 24-17 win against the Detroit Lions. And while their 6-3 record is really good, they don't have a ton of room for error. Back in 1986, only five teams in each conference made the playoffs and you had six teams entering the week with a record of 6-3 or better, including the Cleveland Browns, who were tied with the Bengals for the division lead. Considering the quality of the opponent that they were playing, it felt as though the Bengals absolutely had to win this game, especially because the schedule, with their next six games coming against teams entering this week with winning records, and their next six opponents having a combined record of 38-16, and 16, was not going to get any easier. As for how this game turned out, well, as you can tell by these lowlights, it did not go well for the Bengals. Not in the slightest bit. Because by the time halftime hit, the Bengals, in an absolutely shocking result, were down 19-0, unable to get anything going whatsoever. This was a Bengals team that scored 31 in their last game against the Oilers and had 412 yards of offense, a season high at the time. In this game in the first half, nothing. This was an Oilers team with an anemic offense. 
that was held to seven points or less in two of their last four games, and had only scored more than 20 points in a game twice through nine contests. Against the Bengals, they had their way at first. By the time the game ended, the combination of Warren Moon and Drew Hill looked like Rodgers stall back to Drew Pearson, because Moon threw for 310 yards and a touchdown, and 185 of those yards on 10 catches went to Hill. Cincinnati's running game, which had a Pro Bowl running back in James Brooks who would finish the season with over 1,000 yards rushing and with a league lead in yards per carry amongst all qualified running backs, got nothing going at all, picking up just 46 yards on 2 yards per carry. The Oilers, who were a turnover machine entering this game, having turned it over 10 times in their last 3 games, and having turned it over 26 times over the AK losing streak, or more than 3 times a game, won the turnover margin in this one. At one point in the contest, the Bengals were down 26 0, trailing by 4 possessions at a time when the 2 point conversion did not exist. And while the Bengals tried to mount a comeback and played much better in the second half, it was of no use, as when the final whistle sounded, the losing streak was over, as the Houston Oilers won by a final score of 32 to 28. Just like that, a soul-crushing and season-defining loss for the Bengals. Everyone had them winning. They were clearly the better team on paper. But on this day, it was not meant to be, as the start of this game was just ugly with a capital U. And by the time they could turn things around, it was too little, too late. Which raises the question, why did they lose this game? Better yet, why did they get off to such a slow start? Was it a matter of great coaching by Jerry Glanville? I mean, Sam Weish would never publicly admit to that, as he would rather drink bleach than praise anything about Jerry Glanville, who you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner. Was it a matter of not taking the Oilers seriously, seeing as they were on an eight-game losing streak, and the Bengals won the first meeting? Was it a matter of the Oilers introducing a new wrinkle into their offense and defense that the Bengals were not ready for? Was it a matter of the Bengals just not being prepared or focused, or just shooting themselves in the foot with mental errors? Well, according to this man right here, head coach Sam Weish, the reason that they played poorly and got off to a slow start was none of those. Because in his eyes, without any hint of sarcasm whatsoever, and without any joking capabilities at all, the reason that the Bengals played poorly was because of the Euler fans, or rather, the lack thereof. Back in 1986, it definitely felt as though Euler games were like playing in a ghost town. The Lovey of Blue Days, where the stadium was this rocking environment and felt like the most intimidating place in the league to play in, were completely gone, as after years of dysfunction, including five straight seasons with a losing record entering the 1986 season, it was tough to get Euler fans to show up for games. This game against the Bengals was the Oilers' fifth home game of the year. Three of the previous four had been blacked out, and this one, with the team riding an eight-game losing streak, was going to be the fourth of the five, as just 32,130 fans fit into the stadium on this day. The Astrodome, prior to its expansion in the late 80s, was already on a smaller side of NFL venues. Now, you can't even come close to filling that up. It was a sea of empty seats, the likes of which we didn't even see the previous year in 1985, when the lowest attendance of the venue was 34,336. This game was the smallest crowd since week 15 of the 1983 season, when the Oilers hosted the Cleveland Browns in the midst of an awful 2-14 season, and just 29,746 fans showed up. Oilers' attendance was bad back then, but this scheme was notably bad for just how few people showed up. In many ways, that feels like an advantage if you are the visiting team. Usually, the toughest part about going into an opposing environment is dealing with the crowd and how loud it is. It's tougher to call audibles. It's tougher for everyone to hear everything. It's a lot more intimidating playing in front of people who don't like you versus people who like you. If you're the Bengals, especially knowing the history and knowing how intimidating the Astrodome was back in its past during its glory days, you should be thanking your lucky stars that Oiler fans don't care enough to spend their money on this garbage product and go to the game. 
because it makes your life a heck of a lot easier. It makes just about every team's life a heck of a lot easier. But not Sam Weish. Not Sam freaking Weish. Because the reason that the Bengals lost this game? The fans. There weren't enough of them. They were too quiet. And that, more than anything else, was the reason we lost. Said Weish, in something that I cannot believe was a real quote. I don't know what it is about this place, but it's like there's nobody there. The stadium is so quiet, almost sleepy, and it has an effect on us. A slow start has happened to us here two years in a row now. I don't think we were flat, but maybe mesmerized is the right word. Seriously, the Bengals played well, they weren't flat, if this was a game under normal circumstances in front of an NFL caliber crowd, we would look amazing and win this game no problem. But we were mesmerized by the stadium, as in, the stadium we play at every single year because we're in the same division as the Oilers, and we were mesmerized by the lack of fans. When I think of being mesmerized by a stadium, I think of an FCS school with non-scholarship players who are never going to play football again after they leave college and they're playing every week in front of 3,000 fans in a stadium with a few rows of bleachers, playing one of those guarantee games that they have no shot at winning, and going to a stadium that seats 100,000 people. I don't think of an NFL team playing in front of 30,000 people. If anything, this should be a gift from the heavens for you that you get to do this. I can't even imagine if Sam Weish was coaching during the 2020 COVID season, what his thoughts would be. His team might go winless, because they'd be mesmerized at the crowds of zero that they're playing in front of every single week. But the crazy part about blaming the fans for being too quiet, and how they, not your poor play, was the reason that you lost, because you refused to blame your poor play, was that at one point in the contest in the fourth quarter, the Bengals had a fourth and one. And that's when this happened. Somebody move. I don't see a flag yet. Asias in a stop. I think Cincinnati was offside. If that's the case, the Oilers have made a valiant stand. That's right. The loud crowd caused the offensive line to not be on the same page and caused the snap to be off, caused the play to be botched, and caused the Bengals to turn it over on downs and ultimately lose the game. Said Weish on that one, we had a long snap count, and the crowd became a factor. Our center couldn't hear the snap count, and he snapped the ball before the rest of the team was ready. So let me get this straight. The crowd being too quiet was the number one reason why you lost the ski. And yet, on maybe the biggest play of the game, the crowd being too loud was why you lost the ski? 30,000 fans were quiet and loud at the same time? How does that make any sense at all? How can you possibly blame the crowd for being too quiet as the reason for losing the game and then have that happen? I mean, how can you even blame them in the first place, even that play notwithstanding? But how can you blame them after that? It's like saying the party I went to sucked because the food was terrible, and then saying that the party I went to sucked because the pizza there was incredible and I had so many slices that I felt sick afterwards. Like, do you not see the contradiction there? Holy cow, Sam. You're absolutely delusional. To blame the lack of noise from a crowd for a loss. And then, to blame the crowd for being too loud. Holy cow! How easy is it to mesmerize you? You're as easy to mesmerize as a two-year-old or a.m. a peekaboo. It wasn't the players or the Oilers playing well as to why you lost, or your players playing poorly. It was the freaking fans, or rather, the lack thereof, that every single other team in the NFL would have gladly taken, except for you. Unreal. And it's not like I'm making a mountain out of a molehill here. Other writers even commented on this, and how it showed a severe lack of leadership. One writer said, Where is Sam Weish, that revered leader of men? He's out in the hall, explaining how his team was mesmerized by the Astrodome. Another said, in a brilliant remark about Weish's stupidity, maybe Bud Adams, the Houston owner, should place an order to the Wilson Company this week for 32,130 game balls, or one for each fan. 
everyone agreed. This was a completely terrible thing to say and was tone deaf. And if external factors like that are the reason you lose a game, and if stuff that's happening in the stands is why you're losing a game on the field, then you need to seriously reevaluate things and reevaluate them hard. The Cincinnati Bengals ended up missing the playoffs that season with a 10 and 6 record, missing it via a tiebreaker. Which means that I'm sure they like to have the game against the Houston Oilers, as in the team behind me, back because they were 1 and 8 entering the season and were not a good football team. But then again, I'm not surprised the Bengals lost that game. Clearly, the Oilers screw them over by not having enough fans show up. Because that's the reason the Bengals lost this game and missed the playoffs. They didn't have enough fans re against them in a visiting building. And it was too quiet. Give me a break. Making excuses for a loss in the first place is a complete loser mentality. But if you're going to make an excuse, at least make it something better than this. Blame a referee. Blame a blown call. Blame a player or a team for not showing up. Blame some sort of communication issue. Blame anything except the visiting set of fans for not making noise, which should, in theory, have made your life so much easier. And here's the words of the wise. If you're in the NFL and you're mesmerized by playing in a half-empty stadium with 30,000 people to the point where you can't do your job, then maybe you should find a new line of profession where you maybe interact with five people a day and won't get mesmerized as easily. Because in 1986, Bengals head coach Sam Weish gave us what has to be the dumbest example of home field advantage in NFL history. Home field advantage by not acting like a home field. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jj9shop.com and be sure to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL trivia for cash prizes at 9 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of college football, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.